Good morning, everyone. Good morning, 10 a.m. service. Just that. All right, just get your seatmates for a while once again. I know I asked this a while ago, but pakimusta naman yung seatmate. Give them a high five or a handshake for being here today. Now, before anything else, let me just say, say a couple of things lang. Okay, uh, firstly, um, before, anything, oh, before anything else, not, uh, I do understand that for, for many of us, uh, I think we know of at least someone no, uh, who's graduating today or this season. So before anything else, let me just give a quick shout out to all our graduates or to anyone you know who is graduating. So congratulations uh, to the parents, uncles, aunties, relatives, grandparents. Perhaps some of you are here in Dumaguete, you're visiting the city. Because of graduation, uh, I had dinner yesterday and you know, Dumaguete. Everywhere you go, ang graduation season po di ay. So on behalf of the ministry, no, since we're all about uh, the students, all about the campuses, we're going to extend our congratulations to all our graduates and all the families of the graduates. So again, just give a round of applause to all graduating students this year, okay, for a batch, what, well, 2023, 2024, yun. Now, today we'll be having a serious break, okay, last week, we concluded our previous series called Walk With Me. And in case you're wondering as well, a pastor actually is not here at the moment. He's in Victory Dipolog. He's visiting our church there and he's preaching in our services in Victory Dipolog. Okay, so if you know anyone in Dipolog, invite them to the church there na, okay, uh, and you'll get to hear Pastor RG there as well. And he'll be back next week. Uh, he'll be back tomorrow naman. He'll be preaching next week uh, as we start off a new series next week naman. So you don't want to miss that. So today, break muna ta, okay, from our previous series as we've closed that. In case you missed any of our installments, you can always go to our website and listen to our podcast as well. Now for today, okay, I didn't get to put the title of our, my message today, but if I had one, I'd call it Thriving and Flourishing. Thriving and Flourishing, okay? Now, that being said, uh, anyone here at a certain point in your life, especially perhaps during the pandemic, you were all about plants. Nasa plantito, plantita era mo sa ona. Anyone here? You're one of those people who bought so many succulents, <laughs> so many pots, okay, mga giant plants and all that. Anyone here, you know someone like that? Or you're someone like that, okay? For our foreign friends here, there was a point in years of the Philippines nga trending kayo magpatubo og tanom. All right? Now, I don't know about you, but hopefully yours is a better experience. But in my case, there were times na people would gift us, you know, uh, succulents, eh? mga small nga cactus. Cactus na na, ha? And unfortunately, all of them died. <laughs> Anywhere you can relate to that. Cactus na ganina. It's supposed to be pinaka sa yun. It, if uh, keep alive ni mo, namatay pa. Now, what, reason, why am I sharing all of this things about plants? Because, because in the same way, when it comes to our walk with the Lord, when it comes to our, uh, our, our spiritual life and all of this thing, there will be times perhaps now we don't feel like we're flourishing and thriving. Perhaps for some of us here today, uh, the very act of uh, being the church, you're going to church, perhaps you, you felt like you had to drag your feet just to be here. Perhaps for some of us here today, we, we are simply here because, ah, it's Sunday. It's expected for us to be here. What, what else are we going to do on a Sunday? Or we're here because our family is here. My parents are here. My spouse is here. Uh, crash na <laughs> As my Perhaps, you know, or perhaps we've been serving for the longest time. And on the outside, you, you look okay. You look good, uh, okay naman or like, but deep down, perhaps the joy isn't there. Perhaps the desire to do it is not really there. Perhaps we're just doing, just doing it out of duty. Ay, akong buha ni kay Kishano ko. Ay, matin go service or more worship ko kay Kishano ko. I just have to do this na. Perhaps for some of us, we feel cold. We feel detached. We feel there's just there's no passion whatsoever. Perhaps, yun nga, we, we don't feel like our walk with the Lord, our spiritual life is not thriving or flourishing. Well, to help us today, okay, I want us to turn our Bibles and we're going to look into a couple of verses in Acts chapter 2. Okay, specifically in Acts chapter 2, verses 37 to 38 and verses 41 to 47. All right? Wait a So again, verse 37 to 38 and verses 41 to 47. This will be our main passage for this morning. So I'm going to give, I'm going to give you some time to read your Bibles and we're going to read of it all together. So let me know if you're there, okay? Uh, sorry, I forgot to ask this, but can you ask, request Emma to please stand in advance of the word? <laughs> it slipped my mind. 
So Acts chapter 2, verse 37, it says here, Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 42, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Let me just pray. Father, we thank you for today for your word. Lord, when you speak to our hearts and minds today, as we talk about thriving and flourishing in our walk with you, Lord God. Lord, whatever our spiritual condition today at this very moment, Lord, may you just reignite that passion and desire for more of you in our lives. Lord, we thank you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. You may take your seats, everyone. So again, we're in Acts chapter 2. Now, before we get to verse 37, okay, so just a quick uh, context of what we're reading or where we are in the book of Acts. Uh, if you read to the, the, the gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, okay, uh, after that, as you know, at the end of those, uh, those gospel accounts, Jesus was crucified, he was, he was buried, and he resurrected. And after, after some time of appearing before the early disciples, he then left them, okay? But before leaving them, he promised them that the Holy Spirit would come upon them. He told them to wait for the helper before they would go out there into the world and preach the gospel and make disciples of all nations, so in Acts chapter 2, we find the early church, okay, together in a, in a certain place. And as they were together, the Holy Spirit did come upon them, okay, as, as perhaps many of you are familiar, okay, and by the way, last week was Pentecost Sunday as well, as, as many of you are familiar, tongues of fire uh, appeared uh, above their heads, a loud rushing wind came upon them, and they spoke in strange tongues. And after this amazing experience, Peter, okay, that very same Peter, who denied Jesus three times, that very same Peter, who was afraid to be associated with Jesus, filled with the Spirit, went out where they were gathered together and preached to a multitude. A multi-ethnic multitude, by the way. Because during this time of Pentecost, Jewish people from different places throughout the Roman Empire and, and even outside that, went to Jerusalem. Okay, because it, it, it was a certain feast put for them. So they would all had to go there, especially the men. They were required to go there. And... As Peter was preaching to them uh, the gospel, basically, no, okay? on, 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 with this multitude of people, Peter preached to them. And as a result of that, okay, we got that result in Acts chapter 2, verse 40 to 47. Now, before that, before we get to reading those verses, because I'm going to be referencing a lot the word gospel. Para lang same page ng tanang. Let me just qualify again. What do you mean by gospel? Gospel refers basically to the good news about Jesus Christ and the salvation available through him. Okay? The good news about Jesus and the salvation that's only possible because of Jesus. Here's one uh, good summary of what the gospel is. Perhaps you've seen this many times okay, in our services. It says here, the gospel is the good news that God became man in Jesus Christ. He lived the life we should have lived and died the death that we should have died. He was our perfect substitute. He came to this world. The reason Christ came to this world, the reason why big deal and birth niya. It's because he came here with a mission. Live the life we should have lived, died the death we should have died. That's why the cross is also such a big deal. Growing up in, uh, when I was younger, right? I, being in the Philippines, the Bible grew up in a religious culture. But I never really understood the significance of the cross until the gospel was preached and explained to me. I just thought Jesus dying on the cross is the same as our national heroes dying for the, for the Philippines. But it's so much more than that. He died the death we should have died in our place. A few days later, he rose from the dead, proving that he is the Son of God and offering, and it's very important, the gift of salvation and forgiveness of sins to anyone who repents and believes in him. So in a nutshell, that's the gospel. In a nutshell, that's what Peter was preaching as well to this great crowd of people. And as we look at verse 42 onwards, what's amazing here is that 
this group of people who were added to the church, okay, there were 3,000 who were added. And these were new people, by the way, okay, these weren't 10 year, uh, 10 year Christians or 20 year Christians. We're talking about new believers. These new believers who were added to the church, it says here in verse 42 that, uh, and they devoted themselves to the apostle teaching and the fellowship to the bringing of bread and the prayers. Uh, verse 42 sets up basically the tone of the, the rest of the verses onwards that describes this thriving, flourishing, okay, if not vibrant church life, okay, it's an early church, that they were so devoted to the apostles' teaching, fellowship, bringing bread, and prayer. The word devoted, okay, it, it, in some translations, it means uh, continued steadfastly. It means to be very loyal or very loving, okay, and devoted. Okay, like for example, for some of you, um, anyone here, you know someone very devoted to a certain sports team? Anyone here? Because NBA ka ron. <laughs> remember ako. Anyone here, like, cheer kaya po, barag na eliminate na, good for game eight. <laughs> Mga na tipong tao ba? Okay? These people, knew as they were in the faith, they were so devoted to the faith, to Jesus, that if you look at, again, uh, the verses, they were devoted to apostles' teaching, to the fellowship. They were so generous. They, they, they met each other's needs. They bless one another. It doesn't say that they were rich, they were well off. It's just that they take, they took care of each other. They loved one another. And they met together regularly. Verse 46 says here, day by day attending the temple together, breaking bread in their homes. They received the food with glad and generous hearts, place, praising God, having favor with all the people. They worshiped together, they met together, they prayed together. Such was their life. And it begs the question for all of us here today, why was the early church thriving and flourishing? For any of us here today, as I asked a while ago, perhaps we want our spiritual life, we want our walk with the Lord, thriving, flourishing, growing. We want what they're having. It begs the question, why? Bago pagani sila. Diba sometimes when, you, when, you, when you're new to something, oftentimes ang, ang attitude nato, response nato is, when you're not, you're not. Okay, I'll, I'll take it easy, uh, I'll chill lang, little by little, I'm new to this thing. But for these people, they were all in. All in towards the, the faith, all in towards Jesus, all in towards fellowship, being with believers, worshiping God. They immersed themselves. Why were they flourishing and thriving? That it doesn't, it doesn't say there that the apostles needed to bring them, drag them to, to worship together. Or they did so because they had to do it. No, they devoted them, themselves willingly. It's a pretty interesting question. Why we were very thriving and flourishing? Now, to answer this very important question, we're going to go back a few verses. Okay, the, the, one, one of those first verses we read a while ago. In verse 37, as I mentioned, Peter was preaching to a multitude. So imagine if Peter were here and you were this great crowd of people coming from different places, Jewish people mostly. And Peter was preaching to them. Okay, After Peter preached his sermon to them, this is what they said in verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Okay. So they were cut to the heart. When you say cut to the heart, it, it, it roughly means to be deeply affected emotionally, often experiencing intense feelings of sadness, pain, or distress. They weren't literally pierced per se, but emotionally. Something hit them. Something pierced their hearts. In some translations of the Bible, okay, uh, their hearts were pierced or it pierced or prickling of their hearts. Natusok sila. Now, oftentimes when we read this, we, we, we might tend to gloss it over, but I want us to look into that once again. Why were they cut to the heart after hearing about the gospel? Because for many of us, perhaps, when we hear the gospel, when we talk about Jesus coming here, redeeming us, rescuing us, enabling us to receive salvation, usually we think of something positive. Something joyful, like, wow, Lord, thank you. This is what you did for me. Imagine, like, it's kind of like this. Imagine if, let's say, you know, you, you, go, you went to work or you went to school one day and someone tells you, Oi, bro, uh, your mom dropped by. Na yata ng pagkawan para nimo, or your parent, or your dad, whoever. How would you feel? 
Anyone here you would feel, you know, happy, joyful? Your, your parent went all, all the way, the extra mile, just to drop off and give you food. Anyone here? Or for the married people here, let's say your spouse, okay? Husbands, how many of you would be so happy to hear that? Walang amen, mga husbands. Sana naman, ha? Diba? It makes us feel warm and fuzzy inside when someone does something very kind for us. As, as simple as those gestures, we feel happy. And yet, when you read that passage again in verse 37, when Peter preached to them about Jesus, his death, his resur resurrection, and all those things, it doesn't say there that, and they rejoiced, and they were glad, and they were filled with such a joy in their hearts, and they leaped with joy or something, and they, and they celebrated, and they praised God, and all that. No. And interestingly, their response was they were cut to the heart. They experienced deep emotional pain. And distress sila. Have you ever had this experience, uh, experience that you realize you did something wrong? And your response is, <laughs> Anyone here? Like for example, uh, uh, you, you broke your mom's vase. You broke something sa balay. Okay? Or you ate something at home that you should not have eaten. Husbands. <laughs> Again, di ba? Oops. <laughs> Anytime you, you mess up, you realize you did something wrong, okay? Or there's one time my dad forgot to pick up my mom. Okay? The same thing, we, we, whenever we did something, uh, we, we messed up, our reaction is, what do we do now? It was kind of like that, okay? Their reaction, was, their, their response to Peter and the apostles were, Brothers, what shall we do? Say, Buato nato. They didn't say, Wow, Peter, thank you so much for telling me this awesome, great, good news. Wow, and now I can go on my way. And they nag skip sila, nag hop sila, nag, nag, nag jump for joy sila or something. They were so in distress. Why is that? Why is that? Well, let's take a look at one more verse behind, before that, okay? Another verse. Well, in verse 36, Peter tells the crowd, Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him, pertaining to Jesus, both Lord and Christ. This Jesus whom, what did he say there? Whom you crucified. Peter was telling the crowd, Let all the house of Israel therefore know, and again, a multitude of them, Predominantly in that crowd were Jewish people because they were there for a certain feasting required to go in Jerusalem. And Peter was telling them that all the house of Israel know that, that this Jesus, whom you crucified, the reason why they were cut to the heart was because they were convicted of their sinfulness, right? They were deeply convicted and troubled by the realization of their role in the crucifixion of Christ. Either some of them were directly present when Christ was there in Jerusalem not too long ago, when he was there before the people, okay, and they, and, and they shouted, crucify him. Whether they were there personally, by direct action, or by support, or by rejection of Jesus in any form, or by silent complicity. In any case, they were there, okay, they had a role to play in the crucifixion of Christ. So imagine... Someone were to tell you one day, okay, no wonder they were so cut to the heart. Because imagine if someone were, someone were to tell you one day, you know what? Because of you, this bad thing happened. Like, tungut ni mo, example lang, tungut ni mo, my friend got into an accident. Or because of you, my dad died. So, what if someone were to tell you that? How would you feel? Ouch. <laughs> you would be cut to the heart. Now, let me just qualify something very quickly before I get back to the story, Okay. Um, whatever the, 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 the Israelites, whatever the Jewish leaders who conspired, plotted, or Judas, whatever they meant for evil, I want, us to, I, want us, I want us to understand as well that God meant for good when Jesus died on the cross. They may not have, they may not have understood the plot, the scheme, those who rejected Jesus, but at the end of the day, it was still the will of the Lord to allow it to happen. Remember, in I didn't get to put the first there, but remember, when, when, Jesus, when Jesus was in the garden of, garden of Gethsemane, when he was praying to the Father, he says, 
take this cup away from me, but not my will, but yours be done. So at the end of the day, I want us to understand church that Jesus was not helpless, that he couldn't do anything, na kawawa kayo siya, na, 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 na ambush siya or something, that, 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 that's why he died. No, this was part of God's redemptive plan for our salvation. Let me just qualify that very quickly. Now going back to the story again, it does still, it is still true that these Jewish people still had a role to play in the crucifixion of Christ. And they were guilty either by direct, associ- either by direct action or by complicity. So, and so that's why they were so cut to the heart. No wonder they were so distressed and they responded with, brothers, what shall we do? Now, why is this important for us today? As we talk about wanting a thriving, flourishing relationship with God and walk with the Lord. Here's why this is important for us. And sometimes we miss this out. Why is this important for us? Because even though we were not born over 2,000 years ago, even though none of us were physically present at the trial of Christ, even though we were not physically present when people shouted crucify him and rejected him and spat on him and as the Romans crucified him per se, guess what? We are all complicit in the death of Christ. I want us to understand that. We're all complicit in the death of Christ. When you say complicit, it means involved with others in an illegal or activity or wrongdoing. Kasabot ng tanan, basically. Why is that? Why are we complicit? Because our sin today, our sin, whether yesterday, today, whatever, our sin necessitated Jesus' death on the cross. Think about it. Whose sins did Christ came here for to, to, to redeem? Why did he come to this world? Why, why did he came to this world to live the life in our place? But it, it's for us, for our benefit. Who gets their benefit of salvation? It's us. He lived the life we should have lived, died the death we should have died. It is our sins, our sin, and that all of humanity throughout the ages necessitated the atoning sacrifice of Israel's Messiah pertaining to Jesus. So a lot of times when we think of the gospel, we just think of the, the, the good thing, the warm, fuzzy feeling uh, that we want. All right, thank you, Jesus. You love me. You died for me. But again, remember, why do you have to die? It's because of us. Remember that song, that old song, that we are the reason? We are the reason that he gave his life. Isaiah 53 verse 5 says, But he was pierced for what? For whom? For our transgressions, for our sins. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace and his wounds, and with his wounds we are healed. He who had no sin became sin. He suffered. He died. He was crucified. Again, as I mentioned a while ago, he died the death that we should have died in our place. Think about that, church. Every time you think about the cross, every time you think about the gospel, before jumping to the good thing. Ah, okay, eternal, eternal life, salvation, blessing, uh, reconciliation with God. All these other amazing things. Yes, that's true. That's part of the gospel. But also part of the gospel was the cost for all these blessings. Remember the cost that it took for us to receive all of these good things. And Jesus was that cost. The gospel, did, the gospel is free for us. Because someone paid the price to make it free for us. And that someone who paid the price was Jesus. John chapter 3, verse 16, the old famous verse. And many of us are familiar with this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It is because of the great... Remember, we didn't deserve this. Okay? We didn't earn this. None of our good deeds, none of our actions could, could tell God, Dapat lang, is Jesus. Dapat lang, He died on the cross. I am worth it. No, we are not worth the Messiah coming here and dying on the cross for our sins. And yet, by His grace, for God so loved the world, He gave His one and only Son to die on the cross for our sins. Tim Keller once said, we are more sinful and flawed in ourselves than we ever dare believe. We are more wicked, more flawed, more sinful. When we think of wicked, sinful people, we often think of the, the, the extremes, no? the, the terrorists, the serial killers, the murderers. 
your, your enemy, joke lang, okay? The, the person you're angry with. Pati ikaw, parang, okay lang, Lord. Okay, wala ka, I'm not, that's bad. My mom says, butan ko. But guess what? We are more wicked and flawed than we ever dared believe. And yet, despite our wickedness, despite our flaws, despite our sinfulness, we are here today. If you're here today, you're a Christian. We are here today, recipients of this good news, the gospel, that Christ died for our sins. Now think about that. Someone died, someone gave his life, someone shed his blood so that you may receive all these good things. So imagine that. No wonder the, the early church, no wonder these 3,000 people, no wonder they were cut to the heart and no wonder they said, second thing I want us to, wonder, to look into in that verse, verse 37, they responded, what shall we do? What shall we do? They wanted to do something. They couldn't just, you know, stay put and not do anything. I mean, think about this. If, if you hear this, when the gospel was preached to you, I want us, you don't have to answer, right? I want to ask for this question to us. When you first heard the gospel church, what was your response? What was your response? I remember this story of someone, he was doing one-to-one -one with a person, okay? This is many years ago. And after going through the first chapter of one-to-one, -one, salvation, telling, telling the person about Jesus, about the gospel, he asked them, okay, did you understand about the gospel, about Jesus? And the person replied, yeah, I understood. And, he, and then the guy was like, then why aren't you crying? <laughs> I'm not saying you have to cry. But what, 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 what the heart lang behind that was, was it, ano, ka? <laughs> why is there no response? But think about it. The God of the universe came down to this world, clothed himself in human form, died on a cross for you, even though you're undeserving. Church, what is your response? Think about this. Talk about responses, right? Both negative and positive. Let's say, for example, someone were to come here, walk up to your face right now, and punch you. Okay? Or some women slapped you. W would you just, you know, ignore it and say, Okay, wala lang. <laughs> As if nothing happened. Diba? Most likely, you would have a response. Whether you get angry or by reflex, you would punch the person, you know, re realistically. N not a response that would come out of you. Or, or on a positive note, let's say, you know, you had a great experience. You went someplace, you ate nice food, or you went to watch a movie, you had an awesome time. Or you had an all-expense-paid trip to go somewhere, Europe, Japan, somebody ha. How many of you here you would agree that you wouldn't be able to contain that? You, you, you can't just say, uh, after eating that awesome meal, okay lang, wala lang, lami. <laughs> Ang ubang gayon nato, before mukaon, picture na gayon, di ba? I-post na nato. Na, Nani response before naka-experience pas meal? When we watch something we really like, di ba? We can't help but talk it to other people. Pai, kita ka rin nga sa Lida. Latest episode. I remember back in elementary when there was no internet yet, no Netflix. The atomic series, the next morning, pagkaugma, tapok talan kila si pa, kita kas episode. Yeah, we love to talk about awesome experiences, travel. We love to post about where we went. Bahalag yata ro ka. Dawin Bakong Resort, whatever, or not, but everywhere you go, Kasaganas place, but you want to tell people about it. The point is why I'm sharing all of these things so that when we experience something, whether something deeply negative or deeply awesome and positive, a response comes out of us. We can't just contain it, we can't, be, we can't sit still. If someone were to call you one day, hey, bro, guess what? Y your father is in the hospital. You won't tell the person, ah, muba, all right. Thank you, bro. Thank you for the news. All right. Have a good day. <laughs> Most of you would probably run towards your vehicles, go to the hospital. Our, our response comes out of us. Well, well when, when you talk about the gospel, church, what is our response? What is our response? Because for these people, for these 3,000 who are added to church, if you look at verse 42, and the amazing picture of church life that they have. And we say, we grab amazing chara kayo. And perhaps we want that. 
And mara mag gusto na nila lisod na buhaton. Guess what? The reason they were so devoted, the reason they were so thriving, flourishing, so passionate. It's because they responded this way because of the gospel. They heard Peter's preaching. They asked, what, should, what shall we do? And perhaps, you know, they were expecting a list of to-do things from Peter. These are Jewish people. Perhaps they were expecting, uh, I'll do this, offer sacrifices. They're used to that thing. They're used to many things. Isugo sa ila sa mga Pharisees. Do this, do that. Mga rules, regulations. Perhaps they were expecting, they need to do a lot of things. But Peter simply told them in verse 38, Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I mean, think about it, church. Grabe atong nabuhat. There's nothing we could do to fix that. There's nothing we could do to save ourselves, redeem ourselves. Because... The Bible says the wages of sin is death, spiritual death, eternal torment after we physically die. And there's nothing we can do to, to get us out of that on our own. Our good deeds will not suffice. Christ comes in, solves the problem for us, dying on the cross for us. And we might expect, okay, what's it bato nako? It's like if someone did you an awesome, amazing favor. Bro, I'm going to give you a lot of Oh, wow, okay. Uh, okay, uh, can I do something for you? Sometimes we want to we wanna compensate. When someone does something amazing for us, we want to do something in return. You know, that's, our, that's our usual, normal human nature. But Peter says, repent and be baptized. Peter didn't tell them, alright, I want you to go to the Jordan River, <laughs> swim the entire river, Go around the entire Jerusalem city, run 10 times or something. Offer 10 bulls as a sacrifice or something for your sins or some, whatever. Because, because here's the thing, church. There's nothing we can do to pay off or outdo, outgive what Christ has done for us. Voila, what, even if you spent your entire human life wanting to pay off what Christ did for you, nothing will suffice Nothing will come close to what He did for us, His sacrifice. And so Peter tells them, repent, be baptized. Can you imagine that? This awesome thing called salvation, this awesome blessing that, that we get to receive, all these amazing things. You're telling me that I don't have to work for it? I don't, I don't have to earn it? What did Peter say? Repent, be baptized. Repentance, it, it's not just merely feeling sorry, though there is sorrow involved, of course. But repentance also means to change one's mind or direction. Remember chapter 3 of 1 to 1? For those of you who went through 1 to 1. A change of mind, a change of direction. This is what you're thinking a while ago. This is your perspective perspective about sin, about who Jesus was, about, about the world. But now, knowing about Jesus, knowing about the cross, knowing about sin, change of direction, change of mind. Peter tells them, repent. Don't go uh, how your life has been living right now. Turn away from that. Turn to God. Repent. And be baptized. Let me just qualify very quickly. Baptism is not a requirement for salvation. Okay? This happens after salvation. But the important note here, why Peter emphasized baptism, is that baptism is basically a public declaration of one's faith in Christ. They demonstrated that indeed, publicly, not secretly lang, not mentally lang, but publicly. They believe in Christ. They trust in Christ. They're now gonna live a new life in Christ. Well, not the old life nila. That's the importance of baptism. So you can imagine, Peter simply tells them this, repent, be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. And so no wonder, going back to verse 42, after they were added to the church, it says there, and they devoted themselves to the apostle teaching, the fellowship, and the breaking bread and the prayers. No wonder they were so passionate, thriving, flourishing. It's because of the gospel. These people who heard about Jesus for the first time, perhaps, they were like, huh? This is what Jesus did for me? This is what, what I did to Jesus? This is what Jesus did for me? This is what I received because of Jesus? 
they wanted to know more, more about Jesus. That's why it says there, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, which is of course Jesus' teaching, which of course talks about Jesus, about God. They wanted to know more about Christ. And that's why they were so devoted. The reason why they were so generous, they blessed one another, they met each other's needs, was because they knew they were richly blessed in Christ. Eternity nila, assured na. How can you not be a blessing to others if you yourself know kang Jesus pa lang, kabulong ang bless kay kag something, awala yung maka, makapuli. That no one can repay, no one can outdo. There is, then the reason why they were so passionate about worshiping, prayer, praising God because they knew Jesus deserved all of it. They didn't need to drag their feet to come to church. They didn't need to do that because they were told to do so by their victory group leader or because their families were simply there. No. They devoted themselves to all these things. They willingly wanted to do it because the root of their devotion was Jesus. Their love and desire for Jesus was the reason for their devotion. Knowing who, what Jesus did for them, who He was, and no, wanting to know more about Jesus. At the end of the day, simply put, Kung sa kanang jokes na nagtagalog pa, kanino ka, para kanino ka bumabangon? Para kanino ka nagka-devoted ng ato sa church? Their answer will be, Jesus. And so for us, church, and so for, for all of us here today, as we, as we conclude this story about Acts chapter 2, a couple of things for us. Firstly, for the believers who are here in this room. For the believers, again, as I asked a while ago, what is our response. What is your response? Knowing the gospel, knowing what Christ did for you, knowing He died for you. But here's the thing, how we live our lives indicates how much we understand the gospel. How you deal with your family, how you work, how you live your lives, not just on a Sunday, but from Monday to Saturday also. How you live your life, how you do the things of God indicates how much you understand the gospel to the degree that you understand what Christ did for you proportionally that's, that, that will be your response and how you lead your life as well so what is your response? secondly, once again to the believers here if, if akong ingon ganiya was what's our, what's our response? to the believers here keep preaching the gospel you're a victory group leader you're doing one-to-one -one with someone, you're aspired to do so, keep preaching the gospel. You know what's amazing about this story? Is, is, is firsthand we get to hear and witness what happens when the gospel is preached to a group of people. Peter was just a simple fisherman, not even a university graduate, but because of the Holy Spirit, he went out, preached the gospel, 3,000 were added to the church. So for all of you here today who aspire and desire to be used by God to preach the gospel in your workplace, in your family, in your campuses, in your communities, perhaps you're feeling tired. Perhaps you feel like there's no effect. Perhaps you feel discouraged over setbacks. I want to remind each and every one of us, keep preaching the gospel. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God for salvation. To everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Think about that. There's no other means for someone to be saved. It is simply the gospel. When you preach the gospel to someone, it is different from doing a declamation, an oration, speech, whatsoever. When you preach the gospel, it is the transformative power of God being unleashed to a person. It's not you who's going to change the person. It is the Holy Spirit's work who's going to do that. Our role is to open our mouths and preach the gospel. Keep preaching the gospel. And for everyone else here today, perhaps you're not yet a believer. Perhaps you've just been invited. Perhaps you're, you're curious about what this building here is behind McDonald's is. <laughs> perhaps, you know, you've been attending the services for a while now, but you're just attending for the sake of attending now. 
for the believers, for, for the people not yet believers who are here today, I have this question for you. Will you receive the gospel? Because the amazing thing about the gospel is that it is for everyone who believes. Let me just read the gospel summary once again. The gospel is the good news that God became man in Jesus Christ. Why his birth is such a big deal, we celebrate. Why don't I big deal on Christmas? Because he came with a mission. He lived the life we should have lived. A perfect, sinless life that we can never do. And he died a death we should have died. Because of our sins, we should have died at death. We should have experienced the consequences because of our sins. But Christ became our perfect substitute, died in our place, and three days later rose from the dead, proving He is the Son of God. He's not just man, not just a teacher, not just a prophet, not just some Bible character. He is God. And, he, and, the, and the amazing thing here is, is that He's offering the gift of salvation and forgiveness of sins. You can't forgive your own sins. You can't say, okay na, pasado na ang mga salat na ako, pabinutan ako, okay na, forgiven ako. No. If we want to be freed from the weight of our sins, the guilt and shame of our sins, our sins, the one who offers the free gift of salvation and forgiveness of sins to anyone who repents and believes in Him is Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. That's the good news. We didn't earn it. We didn't work for it. And we don't have to strive for it. It is a gift freely given right now for each and every one of us to anyone who believes. And hope and I pray that for all of us here, we, just like those 3,000 people are added, that we would respond by receiving and believing in Christ. And as we respond, whether new believer, old believer, it will result in a thriving, flourishing walk with the Lord. Let me just pray for all of us this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you for reminding us today that the good news of the gospel, all those amazing things, our salvation, our reconciliation with, with our Father, with our Heavenly Father, all those amazing blessings, all the good things, that we're so joyful over came with a cost and you were that cost you were that price that we can never pay off and Lord right now you are reminding us like man how humbling it is that though well, who, who, who are we that you would die on our cross for our sins Lord kinsaman me para muan hikadere and Lord, I pray that for all of us here today, whatever the condition of our hearts right now, I pray that as we, as we look into the gospel once again, as we think back about your great sacrifice on the cross, it will be as fresh and new as the very first time we, we hear about it. Lord, I just pray for you, you would remove the familiarity, you, rem, you remove this this feeling that I've heard about it, but Lord, all of these things will sound as fresh and new as the very first time someone preached the gospel to us. It may, it may result in a greater desire and devotion towards you, Jesus. Not being religious, but Lord, a greater desire to know you, to worship you, to love you. That because of this, Lord, we don't have to drag ourselves just to read your word, to pray to you, or, or to come to worship you. But we don't have to do it out of, out, of, out of a sense of duty because we have to, because expected, or it's a social norm. But Lord, we would want to willingly do all of these things. We would want to willingly walk with you because, because of you, Lord Jesus. Because you loved us first and we desire to love you. And Lord, I pray for some of us here today, Lord God, as well. Well, heads are bowed down, eyes are closed. If you are here today, and this is the first time the gospel was preached to you, that you heard, you grew up in the Philippines with a, with a religious culture, but perhaps for the longest time, you never really understood what Jesus did for you. You never really understood 
the weight and importance of His crucifixion. But right now, because the gospel was preached and you heard it, if you are here today and you want to receive Him, Jesus Christ, you want to put your faith in Christ, you want to repent of your sins and start live a new life in Christ, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, just lift up your hand right now. See those hands being raised? Lord, we thank you for those hands in humility being raised. Whatever is their background, whatever is the, they, they came from, Lord, we thank you that because of your sacrifice, they are reconciled, saved, redeemed because of what you did for them. Lord, we thank you for, for the gospel, for the good news. Lord, on behalf of each and every one here today, Lord, we repent of, of our sins, Lord. And Lord, we, we look forward to knowing more of you in our lives. But Lord, we, we will not stay lang na may bawan, but Lord, just like the early church for God, Lord, may we yearn and desire, devote to learning more of you and wanting more of you in our lives, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Just give us some claps of praise for that. Before we end lang, um, for all of you who were raising your hands a while ago, I want to really encourage you to connect with some of our leaders in this church before leaving. Um, it, perhaps if you've noticed over the past few months, we've always had people going around the services before the start of worship, even after... Those are our victory group leaders or katong ginaunce ni Cloyd kanina. We have what we call lobby time. Where we just go around. We want to connect with you. We want to meet with you and perhaps invite you for one-to-one -one and victory groups. Again, one-to-one -one and victory groups are great ways for you to grow in your walk with the Lord and be connected to the church community. Especially if you're new here in Victory Dumaguete. Especially if you want to consider this your local church, your church community. I want to encourage you, everyone. Don't just be contented with coming in and out sa tong service. No, be connected with someone in the church community. And so later on, ayra mong katingala, kung mga leaders who are gonna be going around, who might approach you, who might invite you. Okay, and I, I, I want to encourage you. Give it a shot. Go through one to one and victory groups. Okay, if you're part of a victory group, can you slip you up your hand? Anyone here part of a victory group? Yun. Okay, those people. Precious people, okay, talk to them. All right? Can we all just stand up on our feet right now and end this with a prayer? Let's lift our hands before the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you we could come together. Thank you we could have time to worship you as a community. And Lord God, thanks, thank you once again for reminding us of your gospel. I pray for everyone in this room right now, Lord, that may they, may they go out, glorify you wherever you've called them to be. May they experience your faithfulness. May they experience your grace. And may they be a blessing to many people around them. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. This very week, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you everyone. We'll see you next week for our new series.